Today, I have some fall inspired dessert and booze hacks. Oh. Hey guys. Kira here from 50 Shades of a Mom, tips for all shades of a mom life. And in today's video, I am back to share with you this month's dessert and booze hacks. And I have four desserts to share with you and one drink, and they're all fall inspired, or at least things that just gave me all the fall feels. And I wanted to share them with you guys. Now, I had another time where I had some unsuccessful hacks. Now, I still like to share them with you guys because you guys critique me in the most amazing way, and I absolutely love that. Everyone always points out to me nine times out of 10 in a positive way, hey, maybe next time try it this way, or I think it worked that way because you did this. Now, I'm not a perfectionist, nor am I a chef by any means, so I definitely make mistakes in the kitchen, and you guys always point them out to me, and then I'm able to correct them moving forward. And that's the best way to become good in the kitchen is to learn from all of your mistakes, which is try what I try and teach my children while cooking with them, especially Jacob, who's really been divulging. He's taking culinary in school and he's definitely had some flips and some flops while he's learning some things. And I wanted him to be able to see in this video alone that some of these recipes just did not turn out the way that they were expected to. Now, one, at least one, was absolutely hands down crowd pleasing amazing the entire dessert went that one night and we will make it over and over again and you probably could switch things up a bit and be a little bit more creative and open the doors and change the flavor profile and turn it into a whole nother dessert but that's for a whole nother video for right now but i promise you there's at least one excellent amazing recipe that's going to come out of today's video that you guys can take for moving forward but I am surprised that we had a couple of flops. So let me take you down to the kitchen and I'm gonna show you what worked and what didn't. So we're gonna start off with one of the recipes that I considered a flop. Well, not necessarily a flop, but definitely something that I learned from and I will do better in the future. So this is a three ingredient slow cooker cobbler. And it says, while the recipe title sounds a bit drab, like the great ant of desserts, you get to use a bit of evil genius while concocting the perfect pie filling slash cake mix flavor combo. And basically it's any kind of pie filling with any kind of cake mix and butter makes an instant cobbler. So I figured with this time of year, why not do pumpkin? So I have a box of the Great Value Spiced Cake Mix, one stick of salted butter, and then a one can of pumpkin puree. I have our crock pot here, and I do have some cooking spray, even though there's a liner in there, I am gonna just spray the inside of the crock pot. So I spray the inside of the crock pot, and then here's where things already started to go wrong. So I put in my pumpkin puree at the bottom and realized once I did that, that I should have used pumpkin pie filling. This was just puree that I had in my pantry that I thought, hey, I'll just get spice cake mix. I already have butter and boom, instant cobbler. But puree doesn't have flavor like that. There's no allspice, there's no cinnamon, there's no nothing. I should have used the actual pie filling or seasoned my pumpkin puree because once you get a layer of your pie filling at the bottom you're gonna melt that stick of butter in the microwave and then mix in your choice of cake mix and then put it on top and that's it cook it for three hours and there's your instant cobbler and i was thinking of all these creative ideas like what if you did blueberry on the bottom with lemon cake up top or what if you bought like custard filling and did a chocolate cake up top and did like a boston cream pie dupe or even black forest cake with still using like a german chocolate cake up top but then a cherry pie filling down below i just couldn't stop thinking about all the different things that you can do so i was so excited when i closed the lid and i was like that's it we're gonna set it for three hours hours and then we're gonna let this thing cook up and it's gonna be this most delicious like pumpkin spice cake cobbler and I was really really excited about it until I started to watch it cook and I started to smell it and it just didn't smell like pumpkin pie should smell because there was no cinnamon and allspice and all that and so 
it looks good. This is just a snapshot of it. I put a little whipped cream on the side with a little pumpkin spice and the actual cake itself cooked really well. It was super moist and flavorful, but the pumpkin was just pumpkin. I mean, I mixed pumpkin into my dog's food. So it was definitely different and I will try that again, but I'm going to try it now with using some of those other things that I just spoke to you guys about because now I can't stop thinking about all those other things, but this one definitely did not check out. This, however, you guys, I'm labeling a flop. And I was so excited about this. This is the very first recipe in this dessert hack book. And it's coconut whipped cream. How does that not speak to me? So this says, unless you have some sort of aversion to coconut, this whipped cream is the bomb. Dollop it on ice cream, a slice of pie, or a cup of cocoa. And if you know someone who's on the paleo diet, do them a favor and let them know about this little dessert hack. Just cut the sugar for them. And so this is literally coconut milk with vanilla extract and some sugar and cinnamon. And that was going to make this lovely, fluffy, whipped cream so this is the coconut milk that i got from the dollar tree so what better than that and i already had sugar and cinnamon and vanilla at home and you needed a mixer and a bowl and that's it i did actually put the bowl in the refrigerator it says refrigerate the can of milk for at least 20 hours and then it wants you to put the cold coconut milk into the bowl and then start mixing but i just know from making whipped cream itself that if it's not super 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 cold the cream it just doesn't peak the way it's supposed to so that can actually sat in the refrigerator for like two to three days um, and then I put the bowl in the freezer to get it super cold but this says in two to three minutes that you should have these stiff peaks and then you'll add in the sugar vanilla and cinnamon you guys I did this forever I came back and forth and you could see it got a little bit thicker but it never got peaks I don't know if this coconut milk just wasn't fatty enough to actually make a peak but that is not whipped cream that's not even pudding it's like it just it maybe ranch dressing consistency but I got no whipped cream and I was so upset over that because I was actually going to use the whipped cream to share with you guys the next recipe now the next recipe was the grave success of this entire video and I will make that over and over again but please tell me what I did wrong with this coconut whipped cream because I pretty much did everything I've ever done to make whipped cream before and it did not work this one worked though you guys and this one wow wow Wow. So this is a no bake crunchy dessert lasagna and it says you've been forewarned. Your relatives will flock from distant lands the second they find out you're making this to die for cereal snack on steroids. And so this is a no bake dessert lasagna where we're using cinnamon toast crunch and then they said either Reese's puff cereal or cocoa puffs. I found the brownie crunch. You need three quarters of a cup of peanut butter, three quarters of a cup of Nutella, and then a 16 ounce container of whipped topping, which I did not use the whole thing. But we're gonna go ahead and load everything in a nine by nine pan. And you start by putting two thirds of the eight ounce container, a third, a third of the 16 ounce container, you're gonna go ahead and put on the bottom of this nine by nine. And then once you get a good whipped cream foundation, which I thought that was weird, I didn't think whipped cream was solid enough to be a base, but it worked just fine. Then you're gonna go ahead and put pretty much three quarters of your cinnamon toast crunch on top. And then we're gonna melt that Nutella for just 30 seconds in the microwave. And then we're gonna pour it on top and smooth it over so now you have your whip topping your cinnamon toast crunch and this layer of nutella and now just like the lasagna we're going to repeat the layers but we're just going to switch up the order of the things that we're layering so we're going to take another two-thirds of that whipped topping container and we're going to put that on top of your melted nutella i actually thought the nutella and the whipped topping were going to mix together but as long as your whip topping is just thawed and still good and cold it'll go over that liquid Nutella because it's warm and it didn't mix together which was great 
Uh, and then I went ahead and layered on that brownie crunch cocoa puffs and gave that a good layer, only three quarters. We saved a little bit for the actual top. And then I stuck the peanut butter in the microwave for 30 seconds. And now we're gonna throw that on top of our cereal. So we have whipped cream, cinnamon toast crunch, Nutella, then whipped cream, this brownie crunch cereal and melted peanut butter. And so once we're done spreading that, we're gonna do that final layer and we're gonna stick the whipped topping on top of that. And then once that's all smoothed over, then I just topped it with the rest of the cinnamon toast crunch and the brownie crunch cereal. And then you stick that in the deep freezer for about three to four hours. You want it to get good and solid. Once it got good and solid, that whipped cream still made a really good base and the piece came out, you know, gorgeous. But I can't even show you, you guys because this nine by nine went in one night. It was pretty much cut in like six to eight pieces. Everybody ate it that night and it was completely gone. A knock out of the park recipe. Now this was a knock out of the park recipe for Mason because you know Mason and his apples. And this says fall is ha hands down the best season of the year. Do it justice with this perversely decadent dessert. And it is just doing nachos, but desserts style with apples. I thought that was really, really a smart idea because I felt like you can do this as a big snack for kids or at a party and you literally could do anything. So I have craisins and raisins here. I have some of those Lily's little tiny chocolate chips. I have some shredded coconut. I have one green apple. I have one red apple. And then of course our crazy Richard's peanut butter that we're going to melt like cheese on top of these quote unquote nachos. And so we're just going to basically start by thin slicing our apple now it does recommend that you use a tablespoon of salt in some warm water and soak the apple slices for 10 minutes before layering them i was serving this immediately so i wasn't really worried about the apples turning brown but if you're doing this for some kind of party or event or something like that and you're putting it out on display you would want to do that or lemon juice or some kind of trick to the apple so that it doesn't turn but once i thinly sliced it i just laid it on the platter i melted that peanut butter and just drizzled over the top like nacho cheese and then we just went ahead and sprinkled our toppings onto that so we sprinkled our raisins and then our craisins I added those little Lily's chocolate chips which my kids absolutely love and there's no additional sugar so this was a great snack for them and then I finished with sprinkling a little shredded coconut <gasps> is, is it yummy? It is so yummy. That's Can mommy's favorite them? flavor. Um, um, Next to amaretto, mommy loves coconut. And let's tell them they also could put some chocolate sauce on top. Chocolate sauce, chocolate sauce. They could do granola. Granola. They can do nuts. Nuts. Or mini marshmallows. Mini marshmallows. Can you show me where mini marshmallows? I don't have any or I would put them on. Tell them the options are endless. I'm Good job, baby girl. And let's go ahead and finish this day with another flop. So this recipe, you guys, is a drink recipe and it is a cinnamon toast crunch in a glass. But for some reason, my editing program only had sound. My computer would play it, but not my editing program. So this is me running my camera on the computer. So this says cinnamon toast crunch in a glass. The best parts of childhood are well best served in a cocktail form as an adult. There's no crunch, but I assure you, you won't miss that after your third or fourth shot. And so you need a fireball, rum chata, heavy cream, and then this is crushed up cinnamon toast crunch that you're going to use to rim your glass. And so the whole point of this recipe is to combine one shot of fireball and then two shots of rum chata, two shots of half and half or heavy cream, and you shake it and strain it over ice. And you can either make five shots or three cocktails with what they give you. And this, you guys, what you're about to see, all you get a chance to see me do is pour the fireball into the cup, pour the rum chata in, and pour the half and half, and then I give it like a little swoosh around, and then you're going to see that even the footage that would play on my computer, it's 
just about to stop right here. So the only thing you guys are missing is me pouring this out into another cup and I rimmed the glass with that crushed up cinnamon toast crunch and then I poured ice in and boom you can see that's all I got I actually backed the camera up so you can see that it's my laptop playing it and it only let me just share with you guys me pouring it into the cup like that and then that's it I got nothing else um, but like I said all you missed me doing is rimming the cup with that powdered toast crunch and then putting ice in and pouring this over the ice and Paul drank the entire thing I do not know how it's either five shots or two to three cocktails I took a sip of it it definitely tastes like cinnamon toast crunch but it had too much of a little bit of a fireball undertone and I'm not one for the cinnamon flavored whiskey like that so I wasn't a huge fan of it but the milky and creaminess definitely made it taste like cinnamon toast crunch cereal and Paul really really enjoyed it so lucky for him that he can be my garbage truck and I could give him all the things that I test out when I don't like them but that is it for this time's video you guys I know it was a bit of a hot mess but this video was actually filmed on the day that I did my what I eat in the day for Dollar Tree and I ended up not feeling well and going to the hospital the next day. I put that video out yesterday and I told you guys that I was like filming other things throughout the day. This is the video that I was filming. So I don't know if that played a part into why this was like a whole big disaster, but this definitely was not the best showcase of these food hacks. But hopefully I could inspire Jake a little bit more because if you guys saw the video with him doing his cupcakes, he was really really down about how he thought they came out you guys were amazing with all of your comments you did exactly what I knew you guys would do and you completely cheered him up and he saw a whole nother side of his mistakes and being able to learn from them his teacher in culinary even watched it and emailed me and said how proud she was that I was enforcing hand washing and all of that but I mean it's good to share with him that I failed too. Like I tried at a bunch of these recipes. You know, I'm going to make this cobbler better. I promise you I will be back with flavor combinations that are going to blow your guys' mind and it's going to be amazing. I'm going to figure out how to whip that whipped cream because mama wants some coconut whipped cream and next time I'm going to make sure that all of my footage works the best that it possibly can so that I can deliver you guys the best video that I can but at least hopefully Jake sees that mistakes do happen but thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up subscribe if you are new I love you guys all so much and I will see you guys in the next one bye guys